This lesson is in continuation with the previous lesson where we had seen that a function given by x square minus 4 over x minus 2 is undefined when x is equal to 2. That is when x is equal to 2 this function takes the form 0 over 0 and which is not defined. And why it is not defined has been thoroughly discussed in the previous lesson. Now this 0 is present in the denominator of this function because of this term x minus 2 when x is equal to 2. When x is equal to 2, so 2 minus 2 will give us 0. So x is equal to 2 obviously implies that x minus 2 is equal to 0. But we see that 0 is also present in the numerator of this function when x is equal to 2. So, which tells us that this x minus 2 must also be present in the numerator. That is, this x minus 2 must be a factor of this expression x square minus 4. But we can't see this x minus 2 present in the numerator at the moment. So, in this lesson, we will learn how to pull out this x minus 2 from this numerator so as to get rid of this term from the numerator as well as from the denominator. And it is important to do so because once we get rid of this term which makes this function 0 over 0 when x is equal to 2, we get a more simplified form of this expression for the values of x other than 2. And it will be a lot easier to work with a more simplified form of this expression for the values of x other than 2. And also in our coming lessons you will see that we'll come across the situation where we'll have to study the behavior of this function for the points which are very very close to x is equal to 2. That is for the points which are very very close to the point which makes this function 0 over 0. And which we will not be able to do when x minus 2 is present in the numerator as well as in the denominator of this expression. And you'll find out in our coming lessons that once we'll get rid of this x minus 2 from the numerator as well as from the denominator, there's no problem in studying the behavior of this function for the points which are very, very close to the point which makes this function 0 over 0 or undefined. And whatever I've said so far will make more sense to you once I'll show you how to pull this term out from this numerator so as to get rid of this term from the numerator as well as from the denominator to rewrite or redefine this function for the points other than x is equal to 2. So let's see how to do it. So for that I can write this expression as x square minus, I can write this 4 as 2 square and now it is divided by x minus 2. Now the numerator being the difference of two squares can be factorized and its factors are x minus 2 and x plus 2. For the factorization of this numerator, you could use the identity a square minus b square which is a minus b times a plus b. So now let's get back to this step and it is divided by x minus 2. So now we can clearly see that this x minus 2 is present in the numerator as well as in the denominator. And it is this term which is present in the numerator as well as in the denominator that makes this function undefined or 0 over 0 when x is equal to 2. So we have pulled out this x minus 2 from this numerator. So this is just an example. So for any other function, depending on the expressions in the numerator and the denominator, we have to factorize the numerator or the denominator or both in order to pull out the term which makes a function 0 over 0 at a point. So here we just did a few simple steps of algebra. Now when I see that x minus 2 is present in the numerator as well as in the denominator, I'm tempted to cancel this x minus 2 in the numerator with this x minus 2 in the denominator and write this result as just x plus 2. Do you think it's the correct way to do it? So in order to see this, I have divided the further discussion in two different cases and I'm going to show you both the cases which I have right here. So I've taken the first case when I'll discuss this function when x is equal to 2 and I've taken this case too where I'll discuss this function when x is not equal to 2. That is for all the values of x other than x is equal to 2. Now up to the factorization of the numerator that we just did above, both these cases are the same. 
Now we'll see what happens after this step in each of these cases. So let's first study the case 1. So when x is equal to 2, in that case I'm going to substitute x is equal to 2 in this expression. So what I'll get here is 2 minus 2 times 2 plus 2 divided by 2 minus 2 and which will further give me 0 times 4 over 0. So when x is equal to 2, we get 0 over 0 here and which is not defined. So I cannot cancel this 0 in the numerator with this 0 in the denominator and write this as 1. This would be absolutely wrong. We already learned this in the previous lesson, which means I cannot cancel this 2 minus 2 in the numerator with this 2 minus 2 in the denominator. And which is the same as saying I cannot get rid of this x minus 2 present in the numerator and in the denominator. So which means when x is equal to 2, this x minus 2 has to stay in the numerator as well as in the denominator. We cannot get rid of it which means that this function has to be in this form. We cannot get the more simplified form in the case when x is equal to 2. Okay, let's quickly finish this calculation. So it will further give me 0 times 4 will be 0. So 0 in the numerator and we already have 0 in the denominator. So this is not defined. So that's final that when x is equal to 2, we cannot get rid of this x minus 2 with this x minus 2 to write this as x plus 2. Now let's see what happens when x is not equal to 2. So when x is not equal to 2, it implies that x minus 2 is not equal to 0. So when x is not equal to 2, this is the number which is other than 2. So in this case, this x minus 2 will never give us 0. So this x minus 2 over x minus 2 will never give us 0 over 0. In the case when x is not equal to 2. Let's take quickly an example. Let's take the value of x which is different from x is equal to 2. Let's say x is equal to 2.1. In that case, if I determine f of 2.1, it will come out to be 2.1 minus 2 times 2.1 plus 2 divided by 2.1 minus 2 and which will give me 0 0.1 times 4.1 divided by 0 0.1. So when x is not equal to 2, that is I've taken when x is equal to 2.1, in that case this x minus 2 over x minus 2 is not 0 over 0. So there's no problem in getting rid of it. And finally, we'll get 4.1. So when x is equal to 2.1, the value of this function is 4.1, which is defined because 4.1 is a fixed number. So in this way, no matter what number we take other than x is equal to 2, we can always get rid of this x minus 2 in the numerator and in the denominator. So finally, we'll get the result as x plus 2. So we can write this expression as x plus 2 in the case when x is not equal to 2. So now I'm going to combine the information from both these cases to redefine or rewrite our function as so y as a function of x which is originally x square minus 4 over x minus 2 can be written as x plus 2 when x is not equal to 2 and this is not defined when x is equal to 2. So you can see that we have gotten rid of this x minus 2 which is present in the numerator as well as in the denominator to get this expression as x plus 2 for the values of x other than 2. So suppose you have to determine the value of this function when x is equal to 3. So which expression do you think is easier to work with? This one or this one? When x is not equal to 2. Obviously this one because this involves less calculations. See when x is equal to 3 this function will be 3 plus 2 which is 5. Determining the value of this function when x is equal to 3 using this expression is much easier than using this expression because it involves more calculations. So getting rid of the term which makes a function 0 over 0 at a point and rewriting or redefining 
a function for the rest of the points has many advantages. You will also find this helpful in our coming lessons when we will learn to determine the limit of a function as x approaches a number at which a function is not defined. So you can take this lesson together with the previous lesson as kind of building blocks for our coming lessons.